Year after year, the geese who nest round Hudson Bay follow the same route, just like an airline. It's called the Central Flyway, and it reaches down through the Dakotas and Oklahoma to Texas and the Gulf Coast. Geese are international air travellers, without need for passports or customs formalities. It isn't quite as simple as that for human travellers, as the Bartlett family found out. Now they had another family travelling with them, their orphaned snow and blue geese. As they drove towards the US border, the geese were riding in a specially constructed trailer. The Bartlett's hadn't anticipated any trouble in getting the geese across. They'd got the necessary health permits, but the US Customs authorities are nothing if not thorough, and the regulations aren't exactly specific about trailer-borne snow geese entering the United States. Jen Bartlett and her young nephew Les got out to declare the contents of that trailer to the US border inspection. Des Bartlett positioned the ladder so that the geese could climb down and make themselves known. The customs men were interested, but not particularly impressed. The Bartlett's pointed to the wild snow geese, winging their way in thousands southwards overhead. The customs men said, reasonably enough, that they had no control over wild geese. They enjoyed a different status. They were airborne. But even customs men are human, and when Des suggested that he could get his own geese airborne, they raised no objection. The geese took off, but as everyone watched, they headed northwards, straight back into Canada. The customs men watched them go, as if to say, well, that's too bad, but at least it settles the problem. Now they don't need an entry permit. But the Bartlett's weren't worried. At least they were cleared to drive over the border. They got back into their cars, without the geese, and drove a few hundred yards into North Dakota. For a little while, the geese kept flying northwards. But then gradually they swung round and headed back south again towards the United States. The Bartlett's parked by the side of the highway. Their orphans had crossed the border, flying exactly like their wild relatives, and in a few moments they'd landed beside the cars. Jen looked fondly at the truants as Les helped shoo them back up the ladder into the trailer again. At last they were all safely aboard. In fairness to the warm-hearted men of the US Customs, there's a postscript to this story. When the Bartlett's turned round and drove back to say goodbye, the border officials gave the geese full clearance and asked the Bartlett's for their autographs. It's a thousand miles from Hudson Bay to the US border. It's a further 300 miles to the first main staging point on the Central Flyway, Sand Lake Refuge, South Dakota. The Bartlett's drove south to catch up with the wild flocks as they flew in. There are few more staggering sights in nature than Sand Lake Refuge when the fall migration of snow geese piles in. As yet only a fairly small proportion of the birds have arrived. Against the backdrop of fall colours, New arrivals soar into the cornfields that have been specially planted to feed migrant waterfowl.
It's only fairly recently that Sand Lake has become such an important stopover for migrating snows. The refuge was started in the 30s for duck journeying south from their nesting grounds on the Canadian prairies. Today, up to a quarter of a million snow geese virtually take over Sand Lake in the fall and stay until winter catches up with them and pushes them on southward. That many snow geese eat an awful lot of corn. There's always plenty of waste maize left on the ground after the harvester moves on. The geese can hardly be expected to know that the noisy machine is working for their benefit and soon they take off en masse. A blizzard of geese. A blizzard in which every single flake is a bird weighing somewhere close on five pounds. You might imagine that you've now seen pretty nearly every snow goose travelling the central flyway this fall. But wait a minute. That immense flock, frightened by the harvester, is heading back to the safety of Sand Lake itself. The harvester has done its work, and now some of the corn is to be put to a very special purpose. A long trail is laid down to encourage the geese to feed in one carefully chosen area. This man's loading a special kind of goose gun, but he's not a hunter. He's a member of the US Fish and Wildlife Service. Lured by the golden runway of grain, the geese start to plane in. There are a lot of greyish young birds among them. They haven't got the caution of their elders who are more used to the strange, often dangerous ways of men. A lot of mallards there too. The cannon looks menacing, but it's only loaded with a charge to propel large nets. About 200 snow and blue geese have been caught, but it's done them no harm. For such wild creatures, geese are strangely adaptable. Under the net, they stand quietly until the wildlife service men release them. Here's the next stage in the migration study, the following of individual birds along the flyway. It helps the biologists to provide for their needs and understand their problems. The great flocks of snow geese stay around at Sand Lake until winter creeps down from the Canadian prairies. By late October, the first snow flurries powder the grasses along the lake shore. 
the geese won't hang about much longer if the cold weather continues. Blue and snow geese crowd onto water that threatens to turn into ice at the drop of a degree. By November, it's hard to find food. The cornfields are locked in by snow and ice. They're not so much worried by the cold as they are by the lack of food. It's time to head south again. It would be so nice if they could only stay. But those icy fingers push them on their way. So it's up high above the clouds, leaders all calling loud, keep moving on. And they shape their skeins into those fine bees. And they cross the land to flee the chilly breeze. For the autumn is passing soon. Winter is on the moon, oh, where is home? Fly high and free, fly home, fly south to me. Wing through the sky and let me Travel through the day and night, heading for the Southland, ever on your flight, fleeing from the north wind, down across the states, down to where the sun shines, that's where my love waits, that's where my love waits, Fly. Where will they break their journey next after Sand Lake? Some will stop for a while at DeSoto Refuge on the border of Iowa and Nebraska. Others, impelled by the first snows whitening the farmlands far below, will push on further to the refuge at Squaw Creek in Missouri. Driving southwards ahead of the winter, the Bartlett's soon found kinder weather. Now their goslings traveled all the time with the back door of their trailer open. At least they got some fresh air that way, though not as much of it as their wild relatives flying thousands of feet overhead. It's over 2,500 miles from Hudson Bay to the Gulf Coast. They're well over halfway now, the V-shaped skeins heading towards Squaw Creek. Fifty years ago, the vast majority of snow geese pressed on towards their wintering grounds on the Gulf Coast. A few still cover the entire 2,000 mile journey practically non-stop. But now that there's a chain of refuges all along the flyway, most break their journey several times, like human air travellers on a long distance flight. Wings set and paddles lowered as air breaks, the great birds come planing down out of the sky to make another stopover. The Bartlett's made a stopover near Squaw Creek too. 
They'd followed the geese all down the flyway, and just like the birds, they appreciated the first hint of warmer weather. It's been quite a problem throughout the long journey looking after their gosling family. Every day they've been allowed to fly free to exercise their wings. Every day there's been a risk that some would fall to hunters. So far they've only lost one. Well, today in Missouri they plan to give the geese an extra treat. They're going to take them for a swim behind their canoe. They've got another orphan travelling with them, that crazy bird they adopted on a previous trip. And he never likes to be left out of anything. Sandhill cranes don't usually go in for swimming, but Fred is an exceptional bird in almost every way. For a while, the mixed family of snow and blue geese, with Fred bringing up the rear, follow Jen and her nephew, Les, in the canoe. But their favourite sport is quite definitely flying. They circle round the lake, but at this stage of their lives they never venture far from the Bartlett's, whom they still regard as their real parents. One day it will almost certainly be different, and the ties will weaken. But that's something for the future. It happens in all families. Meantime, swimming and flying with their human parents is all that they demand of life. Although Fred can take off from water, he just paddles along behind. Fred has other talents, as you'll shortly find out. Most birds dry themselves by flapping their wings and shaking their feathers. So does Fred, up to a point. But he also likes a sharp rub down with a towel. Not even the Bartlett's can say why Fred does this. It's a very strange piece of behaviour, even for a hand-reared crane. Although it's late fall, the days are finer now and the sunsets more like those of summer. A good deal of all bird migration takes place at night. Snow geese are especially fine night flyers, navigating by the moon and stars. As the sun goes down, furnace red over Squaw Creek, many of the geese are planning on making a night flight down the last stage of the flyway towards Texas. They'll keep going now, across Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, Texas, Louisiana, and on towards the Gulf Coast and the rice prairies to the west of Houston. This last stretch of their migration covers about 600 miles. And when the sun comes up after the long night flight, the skeins are still beating along with undiminished power.
snowfall has come to Texas. The blizzard of geese isn't quite as heavy as when they started out. A fifth of their total falls to hunters every year. Yet the Fish and Wildlife Service say that the geese can stand this sort of hunting pressure. They're even on the increase. At last, the Gulf of Mexico lies ahead. They've made it. And the first small parties come whiffling joyously out of the sky. Snow geese love performing aerobatics, especially when losing height. But at the end of the journey, you can't help feeling it looks like a victory roll. And quite possibly it is. If there's one site that says you're in Texas, it's an oil well. A small skein of snow circles round looking for a landing place. They're not put off by an oil pump or two. It's the farmland they want. Many of the coastal marshes where they once spent the winter have been spoiled for them by drainage and disturbance. On the rich farmland, they can find rice, grain, and short sweet grass, even a wildflower or two. These are young birds, born a few months back on the tundra, and led all the way to Texas by their parents. For old and young, there's a land of plenty to be enjoyed among the Texas rice fields and cattle ranches. Julie, the Bartlett's daughter, joins them during school holidays. The Bartlett's realize that when spring comes, their geese may leave them to join up with the wild flocks. They're so tame, they've learned to fly behind the station wagon now. It's an ideal opportunity to shoot some portraits while the family is still together. The raving individualist, Fred the Sandhill Crane, likes to do his own thing, behind a bicycle. The wild snow goose flocks have stayed contentedly down south all winter. And the Barclays orphans have been quite contented too. But in March, the wild snows begin to get restless. The urge to go north again is tugging at their hearts. So now, when Des and Jen take their geese out for exercise, they feel a tug at their hearts too. They want the geese to return to the wild, but know that they'll be broken hearted when it happens. In the background, the wild geese talk insistently to each other, heralding the journey they'll soon be making back to Hudson Bay. The Barclays geese seem to have become aware of this new restlessness. Could today be the day on which they break the ties that hold them to their human foster parents?
The Bartlett's have adopted many young animals, yet the snow geese have been something magically different, perhaps because the geese have had the power to leave at any moment, but until now they've never claimed their privilege. The wild geese become more and more clamorous, and suddenly the orphans are on the wing. They begin a wide circle around the cars, as they've done many times before. Then they make a second circuit, a little further away. And this time, when they fly over, the sun seem to dip, almost in salute, outlined against the cold blue of the spring sky where the north wind calls to them. Maybe this time they've really gone for good. The wild flocks taking off on spring migration all along the flyway will be the magnet that finally draws them north and convinces them that they are, after all, snow geese and not human beings. Fly. That's where I shall wait, that's where I shall wait. 